Hello and welcome back to Run Level Zero. Today we're doing a follow-up review of Sabian Linux. I was first exposed to Sabian Linux back in October and on October 8th or 7th rather I posted a review of Sabian 13.08 with the GNOME desktop. My experience was uh, less than stellar. There were some issues with the repositories being uh, exceptionally slow and it, it left me with with kind of a bad taste in my mouth so I wanted to revisit Sabian and in early December 2013 they released Sabian 14.01 I thought it would be a good opportunity to take another look uh, this time we're going to look at the KDE desktop version and just a few uh, comments here on the on the release notes Sabian 14.01 is a modern and easy to use Linux distribution based on Gentoo or Gentoo following an extreme yet reliable rolling release model. Uh, this is a monthly release generated, tested, and published to mirrors by our build servers containing the latest and greatest collection of software available in the entropy repositories. So a couple of things we're going to be looking at here is Linux kernel 3.12.5 KDE 4.11.4 and they've installed a Steam uh, session that we're going to take a look at. I have to say that uh, my experience with Sabian, let's go ahead and go over there and, and pick it up, this latest version KDE, it, it has been a real joy. I've been excited to do this, uh, this review for several days now and I'm glad I can finally get it out here. Beginning with the the login screen, it's, it's beautifully themed, um, really nice. Over on the right hand side, you can see there's a but button for session type. This session type button, when you click it, you can see there are several different uh, desktop environments or sessions that are pre-configured, and we're going to take a look at a few of them now. Beginning with the KDE Plasma workspace. So we'll select that one, which is the default. Give it our password. Logging in and boot up time is about average for, for a KDE distro. Beautiful theming. Uh, as usual, this is installed in a virtual box with two gigabytes of RAM and two dedicated processors. Here we go have a nice traditional desktop layout that's going to be familiar and comfortable to new users to Linux. Looking at the desktop you have an opportunity to donate to Sabian and folks if you use a distro or if there's software out there like LibreOffice or Firefox something like that that you you use often I want to encourage you to donate to them. Uh, many of these distros are, are just made by individuals or small teams of developers and they really don't receive a whole lot of support so anything that they can get from you whether it be your money or your time and talents if you're a programmer or even just want to volunteer to be a beta tester I'm sure that they would welcome the help so get involved in the communities and help them grow and stay alive also on the desktop this is one of the great features of Sabian Linux in my opinion there's a shortcut to get live help and when you click it it's going to launch your default web browser which is Chromium and Sabian and you're going to have the opportunity to log in once you prove you're not a robot uh, you're going to be able to log in and get live chat for for any help any help you may need on your desktop so in my opinion that's a huge win it's one thing to be able to go to a forum or look up on a wiki and, and see how to fix your problem it's another level of support entirely to be able to get free support, free help for your desktop, live help, chat, I mean, that, that's great. There's a launcher for the Rego application browser. This is your software center in Sabian. And it's a nice, uh, it's, it's a nice utility. When you first launch it, you can see that you have categories that are presented to you. And one thing that I really like about these categories is that uh, in addition to having networking office and you know, categories, you also have categories for your desktop. So if you go into KDE Desktop and view it, 
you can see the applications that are specifically for ooh look at that let's try that again I've actually run into that before you're gonna click on the wrench go back to application groups and run it let's see if we can't launch that again see if maybe that was just a minor hiccup yeah okay I have run into that before but it, it usually clears out on the second time so it looks like there still could be a little bit of tweaks in uh, Rego but going into KDE category you can see all of the uh, all the applications that are suggested for KDE there's these are probably going to be your QT applications so that's nice I've not seen that before the one thing that I will say about uh, Rego I would like to see some subcategories for example if you go into networking so you're looking to, to install a file a, a web browser rather uh, let's let's look for Firefox so you go into networking and click view here we go all it has is everything for networking there are no uh, subcategories in here nothing in here for a web browser say now if we go back and we search for browser the way you do a search you're gonna come up here and hit the little return key this takes you to your uh, browsing applications if you look for browser it's gonna pull up all browsers and search results are returned rather quickly I do like that but this is all kind of browsers uh, utility for designing Emacs and color themes so I mean a SQLite da database database browser uh, so you have to get kind of uh, specific with what you're looking for here and while I have no problem with that and they're more experienced Linux users won't have any problem with that you will most likely uh, encounter some issues with new users not really being very comfortable with that but all in all it's, it's a good software management center this is also where you're going to apply your updates and get notifications about your software if you do have a steam account once you log into steam for the first time you're going to be presented with this on the desktop this icon for a quick launch into steam now we're not going to go I'm going to show you that the, the steam uh, session but we're not going to go too in-depth into steam on this review because it is running in a virtual and frankly steam is not designed to work in a virtual so we have one panel across the bottom traditional layout on the lower right hand side there is your date and time your calendar let's see there is a network monitor volume control with access to your access to your mixer location or keyboard layout clipboard manager as well as your notification area on the lower right hand side you can see you have a pager with four virtual desktops set up as well as an activities manager that'll give you access to several different desktop layouts clicking the little chicken foot brings up your application menu and let's take a quick look at some of the applications you have installed uh, in the favorites you have access to the KDE system settings and KDE has an excellent control panel as well as some of the better uh, visual effects available for uh, native window managers chromium is the web browser of choice nice all right we have dolphin file manager IRC client is conversation Clementine music player a VLC is installed and you have access to the LibreOffice writer and spreadsheet digging into the uh, applications menu under education you have virtual globe there's a Sabian men uh, menu which I really like this this puts all of your Sabian specific uh, shortcuts right here at your fingertips so you have access to the home page the help forum the repos uh, again to documentation all that's right at your fingertips so you don't have to go looking for it under development there is a QT designer for games there are quite a few games that are pre pre-installed a nice selection that are uh, categorized for you 
for graphics. Uh, we're just going to hit on a few of the, the highlights here. Of course, there is a scan uh, scanning uh, utility, scan manager here, an image converter, as well as a couple of photo and screen capture programs, case snapshot here. For internet, let's see, there's a Bluetooth uh, utility, Chromium again, a RSS feed reader, Instant Messenger, let's see, IRC client, a network folder wizard, and also Conqueror is installed as an alternate web browser. For multimedia, again, we have Clementine. K3B is for disk burning. There's a shortcut for XBMC, which we're going to look at. There, there's a desktop session set up for this. Um, VLC media player, your sound mixer, and uh, to MIDI, a MIDI sequencer. So they have all their bases covered here. Under Office, of course, you have the full LibreOffice suite installed. And settings, you have your usual uh, system settings, Rego browser again. For utilities, uh, just the uh, standard set of Linux utilities. All right, so this is just a quick rundown of the KDE desktop. Now we're going to log out and take a look at a couple of the other sessions that you have uh, available to you. So we'll select log out. And we're going to log in again. Takes a moment. There we go. Now we're going to change our session type. There is a, we're not going to go into it now, but there is a configured Fluxbox session. So if you want something streamlined and lightweight, you can take a look at that. But we're going to take a look at the uh, Steambox session right quick. Again, Steam is installed and configured for you. It's just waiting for you to log into your Steam account. I'm not going to log in here. Uh, just wanted to show you that it is up and running. Let's see. Well, let's see if it'll launch it again for us. Again, this is uh, running in a virtual box, and this is not where Steam was meant to be run from. And it's only running with two gigabytes of RAM. So if you decide you do want to use Steam, if you decide that you do want to uh, to go with this, be sure that you have enough RAM and a, a, a a GPU, a graphics card that is able to handle this environment. I would recommend, you know, definitely having a more modern, up to date system. And you certainly don't want to be running it in a virtual. But this is awesome. Just the fact that it'll even come up here. Again, Steam was not developed for this environment. But it's, it is configured, it is up and running. And this is the first distro that I've seen that actually has this configured and ready to go even though it is running a little choppy here for me don't hold that against them that's that's only because of the environment that I have it running in so we're gonna exit steam and log out just wanted to show you that that is there and it is available and that that is most impressive to me um, let's go over and change type again and we're gonna look at the Sabian Media Center wait for that to come up and you see we have XBMC and that logged in really quick this uh, in contrast to the Steam session is running just absolutely like a dream even in a virtual box with two gigs of RAM and two processors the XBMC session is rocking uh, I was streaming some video from YouTube on here earlier and it, it just performed like a champ in my opinion this this new version of Sabian 14.01 and the KDE version specifically is probably the most complete out of the box desktop experience that I've seen um, as far as meeting all the needs that a user could have 
just without any further configuration needed to your system. You don't have to configure XBMC, it's already here. You know, if you if you had a laptop uh, uh, or a desktop that you wanted to set up as, as a media center in your living room, you know, run the output to your TV, uh, HDMI, and then have a a couple of wireless controllers for your games, a wireless keyboard and mouse for your computer. You could do it all right here from this one Sabian installation. You could do your gaming through Steam, you can get your media going through the XBMC session, and you can do your regular desktop work using that excellent implementation of KDE. You put on top of that the Gentoo base with its up-to-date uh, really cutting-edge software that, that it's known to, to keep up with. I mean, you have something really special here. I'm glad that I've looked at this, and uh, I'm really glad for the experience that I've had with Sabian Linux. Um, they, they have redeemed themselves 100% in my eyes, and I'm really glad that I went back and took another look at it. So who should use Sabian? Um, anybody can really use it. Due to the software center, I would say that new users should be cautiously optimistic. If you're new to Linux, I would not shy away from Sabian. You can definitely give it a try. But I wouldn't recommend it to complete new users. If, if, if you're coming over from, say, Windows or Mac, and you're more skilled in those areas, you're more adventuresome, you're comfortable in, in, in a computer, you're comfortable with administering a computer, you know, then, then yeah, if this is your first Linux distro, Sabian could be right for you. If you're a more casual user, uh, you don't know too much about the system, you like to log in and go right into uh, checking email and, and surfing the web, then you might, I don't know, you, you could try it, just be cautious. Um, but it, it, is, it is certainly a, an excellent distro. Now for the more experienced Linux users out there, you can't go wrong with Sabian. This, this is a good solid distro and coupled with its rolling release cycle, I, I am thoroughly impressed with it. Uh, good job, Sabian. Um, please download it, give me a try, let me know what you think. Leave your comments and questions below. If there's another distro out there you want me to take a look at, please uh, drop me a comment. I'll be happy to do my best to, uh, to accommodate those requests. Thank you for joining me for this review. I hope to be with you soon for another video.